Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you this surprisingly cool tool to generate textures, called With Poly, or just Poly for short. It's pretty similar to Dreams Textures that I covered earlier. The main difference comes from Dreams Textures being an add-on, whereas Poly is a website that you can generate your images and then download them. This has the advantage of being able to generate 8K resolution, <laughs> it has a pretty nice user interface, and was actually revamped fairly recently. It also has the benefit of being able to have a gallery that can help with prompt generation, or you can actually just download those textures instead if you would prefer those. And it's not limited to just Blender, as it is just a texture you download so you can actually put it into any other 3D software. Before diving into a demonstration of how to actually utilize Poly, I'd like to acknowledge that this video is actually sponsored by them, and is actually my first ever sponsor. But that definitely doesn't detract from the fact that it's actually a pretty cool tool. Using this tool is actually really simple. All you need to do is go to the texture editor, and while you could just enter a prompt into Quick Generate, I would actually recommend going to Patches, and then entering your prompt and hit Generate. This has the benefit of allowing you to choose what one you want versus Quick Generate. While it will have the PBR maps and everything ready so you can just download it that way, it doesn't really allow you to choose and it takes a little while to generate while patches generate real quickly. Then select your favorite patch. Or if you don't like any of those, you can simply hit Generate again and it will do it pretty quickly. Once you have one that you like, skip the next tab which is really just a tab that allows you to upload your own images, which could be cool in certain use cases. And instead, we're going to select the pill like button, which is Make Seamless. Here you can control how much you want your texture cropped by changing the patch scale. Then you can hit Make Seamless. And once that is done, you can go to the next tab, which is Upscaling. Depending on whether you have the paid version, you can go all the way up to 8K. Otherwise, you could still go to 2K resolution, which isn't horrible for any texture that you generate. Next, it's to the PBR maps, which all you need to do is select the material type and what maps you actually want. Once done, it will show you a nice render. You can change the preview render settings by clicking the cube in the top right and you can change the lighting with the button right next to that cube. Once you have the texture that you like and everything's looking good, you can hit download. Yeah, it's really that simple to get it working. To add these materials to your object, it's the same way you would do with any texture in Blender. Go to the shading tab, add image textures, or alternatively just find those textures and drag and drop them which I found to be easier, and then plug the maps into your principal BSDF shader. I typically just do the color, roughness, and displacement maps for most objects. Also, to fix texture alignment issues, and if you want to move your texture in general, then add a mapping node and texture coordinate node, and plug that into the vector of each one of the nodes. Now that everything's working, I'm going to create a low poly cannon. I quickly modeled it up and then started with the textures. I mainly wanted some wood textures and a metal texture for the main structure. And it really didn't take that long until I had the textures I wanted. Though I did run into a small issue where I couldn't download the metal textures which was actually resolved pretty quickly, and it had to do with the servers, which shouldn't be an issue for very long. That's mainly an issue because they are working on scaling up their servers so they can handle more people. While doing the cannon, I also decided to do a mini physics simulation with the cannonball shooting out and barely taps some objects. I ended up creating a cool magma texture for the ball, and used the same wood texture as the wheels, and just colored it differently with the color ramp in Blender for the other objects that the ball hits. Eventually, I had this result. And just as a comparison, here it is without color. I think it turned out pretty good and I definitely found these textures to be useful with this demo creation. While first testing Poly to get to know the website a little better, 
I ended up creating a small water simulation using this weird but unique water texture that it generated. <laughs> Let me know what you think of that. Anyways, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of Polly. Will you be using it? If you happen to have any issues while using Polly, definitely check their Discord server, as I saw a lot of helpful conversation there. Either way, I find it crazy how even small companies like Polly are now able to actually create specialized AI, in this case, to create surprisingly good textures. Well, anyways, I'll see you later. Bye!